His Royal Highness the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the principal of St. Christopher's School, Dr. Simon Watson at Qadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of further supporting the educational sector and its role in advancing Bahraini's skill set in order to further their contributions to the kingdom's national development. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of providing a quality public and private education environment that supports innovation and creativity in line with the educational goals. His Royal Highness was briefed by Dr. Watson on St. Christopher's development plans and programs, where His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation for the school, its administration and staff's role in furthering the kingdom's education sector over the years. Dr. Watson expressed his gratitude for his opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's commitment to bolstering the kingdom's educational sector. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Hamad bin Faisal Malki also attended the meeting. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Bahal Al Ansari, participated as a lead speaker in a symposium entitled Social Policies to Consolidate the Practice of Responsible Citizenship in the GCC Countries, organized by the Executive Office of the Labor and Social Affairs Councils of the GCC General Secretariat in Amman. Al Ansari emphasized the importance of developing social policies and linking them to citizenship and identity, as well as assessing their impact on societal cohesion and stability. She stressed the importance of developing the prior prioritizing social cohesion while continuing to contain the repercussions of the health pandemic with their economic and social effects. Lansari noted that social policies cement social cohesion in the short run and act as an engine for national recovery programs in the long run by focusing on the elements of social protection and the fairness of providing opportunities. The President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Director General of Customs Administration of the Netherlands, Nante van Shelven, and the accompanying delegation. Sheikh Ahmed and the delegation visited the Customs Directorate at the Khalifa bin Salman Seaport and the Unified Customs Center at the King Fahd Causeway and the Air Customs Directorate. The delegation was briefed about the Directorate's efforts to facilitate trade, secure Bahrain's borders, and promote travel and trade. During the visit, a visual representation by the Customs Affairs Department about advanced customs services that rely on modern technology was also presented. The presidency was during a time when a lot changed for customs. Um, I refer to COVID, I refer to uh, sanctions against Russia, the war in Ukraine, um, and also a big development in technology. And during that presidency, all these things came together. And I think His Excellency uh, um, Sheikh Ahmed did a wonderful job in um, binding us all together, getting all the different views at the end of the day on the table he is a very charming person, so with his personality, he really got the WCO on a much higher level. I learned today a lot about what happened to Bahraini customs. And I think the customs organization was really taken to a next level. I understand that the organization of the customs uh, uh, organization is totally different than it was. And I think that was, that was a wise move. The second thing I learned today is that much of the work has been digitalized and um, also a lot of innovation has been uh, uh, taken into account and that was for me very impressive to see. Well basically customs is about on the one hand facilitating trade and on the other hand protecting society and that's always a balance, a balancing act every customs organization has to do. Mm -hmm. And what I found here in Bahrain is that um, the customs really work on facilitating trade, make it much more swifter and smoother, uh, giving uh, companies that have an AEO status really an advantage in trade, because at the end of the day, time is money, and they understand that, but not at the cost of not protecting society here. So I see a lot of digitalization, I see a lot of innovation, um, uh, sensor technology, mm -hmm. I was at the x-ray machines, I learned how fast and smooth things go there. So a lot has changed here in this customs organization for the benefit of trade. 
Bahrain International Airport Police Directorate won the award for the best procedures in the airport security in the Middle East through the assessment issued by Airports Council International for the second quarter of 2023. More on this report. The support of His Majesty the King and the close follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister has made Bahrain International Airport a global model in the aviation industry sector and strengthened the Kingdom's position at the regional and international levels. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the employees of Bahrain International Airport in presenting a positive image of the Kingdom of Bahrain and demonstrating its hospitality, the Bahrain International Airport Police Directorate won the award for the best procedures in airport security in the Middle East through the assessment issued by Airports Council International for the second quarter of 2023. This award is the result of the development and modernization strategy which aims to facilitate operations at the Airport Police Directorate. This prestigious international recognition embodies the commitment to provide a smooth, comfortable and safe travel experience for all passengers and is a qualitative addition to Bahrain International Airport's international achievements, which enhances its position in the ranks of regional and international airports. The number of passengers passing through Bahrain International Airport increased by 22% last July on an annual basis driven by the recovery of global tourism. According to the data of the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications, Bahrain International Airport received a total of 832.7 thousand passengers last July compared to 681.6 last year. The number of arrivals to the kingdom during the past month reached 414,000 passengers with a growth rate of 25% while the number of departures reached 480. 18,000 passengers with a growth rate of 19%. The total number of flights increased by 8% last month to reach 8.2 thousand flights. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain seeks to motivate excellence, increase productivity and improve performance in government agencies. This endeavor is reflected in all decisions and directives that are in the interest of the government work system. More on this report. Upgrading the outputs of government work is based on consolidating the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and justice and the approval of the cabinet on the memorandum of the Civil Service Council regarding amending the regulations and systems of the civil service in which the Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed to increase the Distinguished Employee Award to 3,000 dinars in confirmation of the government's keenness to develop human resources and motivate them to make achievements and increase productivity in government bodies. Developing the outputs of government work and motivating employees is associated with improving performance and increasing the efficiency of the government apparatus as a whole. Therefore, the process of restructuring government institutions comes at the heart of the comprehensive development process of the government sector, which was proved by the Cabinet's approval of the memorandum to restructure a number of ministries and government agencies with the aim of improving performance and increasing efficiency. The Civil Service Council is keen to implement government policies regarding government work in terms of developing human resources and raising the efficiency of production and institutions to ensure smooth work in government institutions and improving the outputs of government work in line with the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Organizing Committee of the E-Government Excellence Award 2023 announced that the registration and submission deadline for the award has now been extended to Thursday, September the 7th. All public, private and civil society institutions, as well as individuals, are invited to participate in the 12th edition of the award. Candidates who submit their technological and innovative initiatives and projects via, via the awards website. The organizing committee affirmed that the deadline extension provides potential participants with a further opportunity to review their digital projects and initiatives before submission and all requirements based on the criteria. Building on the success of the regional workshops around the world, the second edition of Middle East Space Generation Workshop, second MESGW, will be held in Bahrain on 6 to 7 September 2023 at the University of Bahrain. The two-day regional event will connect university students and young professionals with experts, academics and industry representatives. Ideas from the workshops might interest the industry, which can create new partnerships and business opportunities. The event is sponsored by the National Space Science Agency and the University of Bahrain. For more on this, we have the statement from the Acting Executive Director of the Space Generation Advisory Council, Ms. Valentina Lucchetti. Hi everyone and thank you for having me tonight. 
The Space Generation Advisory Council is the biggest network for students and young professionals ages 18-35 interested in the space sector. SGC has the goal to link its members with the industry, academia and the space agency. One of the ways to do this is by organizing events like the second Middle East Space Generation Workshop that will be held in the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, on the 6th and 7th of September at the University of Bahrain. The Middle East Space Generation Workshop is a two-day regional event that aims to gather university students, young professional experts, academia and industry representatives from the Middle East all together. It will provide the participants with an unprecedented opportunity to strengthen the regional network and will prepare the ground for discussions about how to enhance the space industry in the region. The key activity of the events are its working group. The delegates will decide which topics to discuss during the uh, events amongst space and education, space entrepreneurship, women in space, engage of generation and space economical infrastructure. On behalf of the SGC leadership, we thank the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, for helping us in organizing this event and wish the team a great success. Thank you. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received the Sudanese Army Commander General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who arrived at Al-Alamein Airport in northern Egypt. The meeting included holding talks between the two sides, dealing with developments in Sudan, bilateral relations between both countries and ways to enhance them, and issues of common concern. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Assoumi, called for a strategic partnership between China and the Arab countries by activating the parliamentary tools between both sides. The Speaker stressed that China is a strategic friend of the Arab countries, especially that its foreign policy is based on respect for the sovereignty of countries and non-interference in their internal affairs. Al Assoumi also appreciated China's position in support of Arab issues. Saudi Arabia's Industry and Mineral Resources Minister met with Turkish Minister of Energy and Natural Resources. Both sides discussed enhancing cooperation that benefits the two countries, especially in the industrial and mining sectors. Saudi Arabia and Turkey also signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Cooperation in the Field of Mining, which will pave the way for bilateral cooperation in that field. European Council President Charles Michel said the EU must be ready to enlarge by 2030 if it wants to remain credible. He was speaking at the Blood Strategic Forum in Slovenia, during which he expressed EU's next strategic agenda by 2030. The forum was attended by leaders from Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Moldova, Mont Montenegro and North Macedonia and all official candidates for EU accession.